Welcome back to another VFX tutorial and today we're gonna create a pretty sweet heat shader with a few clicks and a few things typed in. So what do I mean? Well, we're gonna change our scene from this to this. As you can see, pretty sweet thing. Very, 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 very easy actually to uh, apply. And if you want to know the quick and dirty way, so this will be the first part and then the second a little bit more elaborate and then what all these uh, numbers and parameters and whatever yada yada mean but of course if you just want the quick and dirty way stick around this is one up indie i am a developer so if you like what you're seeing hey why not consider sharing liking and subscribing to boost my channel into infinity alrighty so to create this effect it's not too difficult so the theory is kind of easy so for that first of all we need to layers so here a new uh, filter effect if this is grayed out this means you are not in your yours um, well or oprah's mind a paying customer that means the preview is just for us people who actually uh, kind of uh, in quotations have a paid subscription and for everybody else this will be later on added but of course everybody will get those sooner or later so already so the first thing which we need to have is first of all our distort shader so we just go uh, create an effect layer and go under distort as you can see nothing is happening because i haven't checked the box and as you can see uh, that looks pretty rough so let's go with a smaller value so for the amount i guess 15 and what we're going to do to create this wave effect we're just gonna add up some numbers and for example as you can see that's pretty much it so basically we just need this kind of value and boom we update it into infinity and then we create this uh, wavy uh, distorted effect around the screen and this is pretty much it. and the second one is pretty easy also we just take uh, colorize such a color because uh, that's not good like this one and then reduce the yeah, so this is looking pretty good. So as you can see, before, after, and boom, this is the way how we can do this. So for that, we're gonna create an object, uh, call it object change filters, drag it into the room, I already did this, and then in our, boom, uh, in our step event, we're gonna do a few things. First of all, we need to grab the layer, so this dude here, and then we um, apply well, one variable and we just change one variable in the specific layers for that we just go f extract so basically this is the same stuff which you see in the manual which i'm gonna go in the second part but if you want to get the quick and dirty way uh, we're gonna skip that part and then for example we say like hey if the struct is not minus one minus one just means there is none assigned so i guess one two three four and then these are then numbered and then minus one means no filter is applied to this specific layer and then what we're going to do we're going to change and uh, grab the parameters of this specific layer so this fx layer and then we just say like hey fx get parameters of this specific layer so this and then what we're going to do we're going to go here and say dot and take the G distortion offset and for now you have no way how to get that once again this is in the second part but it, this is just it says G distortion offset so basically this is the same here so it's a struct for offset 1 and 2 and therefore we need to input two values and for that to change actually we need to have a little thing for example I just say it like uh, create in the create event two values or well one value and then a second one which is just adding it up so basically we say add up and then we just add up a value or I don't know do something like this for convenience boom and then we just add that here and maybe you can put a zero if you like but of course you can do that with both it doesn't actually change too much uh, all that is and then we just say fx set parameters apply that so fx set parameters to this specific layer these new adapted parameters which we changed here and then once we started and as you can see now we got in five minutes our distortion 
shader without actually doing any shadering as you can see looking pretty sweet and then one coloring and one for distortion and this is pretty much it so this is how you get that and then if you want to actually know how that whole thing works so step by step so you can actually understand how you can do that so not the quick and dirty way well this is the second part so let's go into the manual because they updated it now so it's under filter effects and functions and here you don't have too many functions which is pretty good so you can um well not do too much and therefore this is pretty sweet and then for example um for example if you would like to create your own filter on top so basically you need to have this is kind of important so you once again you need to have the layer uh, in there even though for example there's no filter applied but you need to have it and then you just say like hey i want to apply the colorize the edge attack the grayscale um if you have a good eye it will say uh, it will have one missing which is uh, the filter uh, called distortion edit it up so here for example this would be for example a way how you could create a filter and this is then the way it goes and for example you can get the name and but the most important part i guess will be shown here in the video and then the rest is kind of shenanigans for beginners or not for beginners so the first thing for example what you can do is if you for example want to say like hey um, i want to cancel the effect which is in here so for example we could do this on while well, pressing control up so here do, do, do. Shift control here and then we just say like hey if the struct is active so it's not minus one we say layer clear fx and then we just clear it and for example once we start it here we just press now control and boom the effect is being cancelled for this layer and this is of course nice but for example if you say like oh but i want to well um put another con uh, another uh, effect on it for example not the same one but let's say for example we want to create the same one this is how we would do it we would say like hey this is once again in the tutorial it's basically in the, in the manual it's basically the same so first of all we say fx create then here filter distort or for example all the other filters so here filter colorize edge attack grayscale yada yada, yada. but i want to uh, recreate the distortion effect and then for example um, then you say hey layer set fx and then for example you apply that layer because here now uh, first of all you need to create it and then you need to apply it to the layer so once again for example once we start it the uh, pretty brutal effect so we press control once now the value is i don't know one two three or whatever boom now it's minus one and we press control once again and then as you can see ugh, this doesn't look good why is that because uh, we are creating a new distortion effect on top but with the default values and that was what was that 550 as you can see looks pretty rough for the default values so therefore um, you just have to say like hey fx set parameters to what to this specific effect and then you got those values like g color tint and then once again destruct um, depending what kind of values we have for example here you have a value of, of just one the amount would be one offset here as you can see two values or for example for this thing are uh, four values so rgb and alpha so here are four values and as you can see here g color tint is actually from the manual so this is not the correct one but for example, um, our case, uh, the distortion offsets to give it the correct amount of values, which are two. Then I don't know, go for zero. And then of course these things will be updated in the in the step event. And then we got the same flow again. So here, clearing and getting rid of. But I haven't actually <laughs> told you the most important part. How are we actually getting those values? So, so, for example, the G distortion offset or whatever. Well, this is the thing which you don't find in the manual. So, um, 
we need to kind of get those values indirectly and then we can kind of deduct what uh, how many parameters they have inside so how many values they are in there so for example we just get the names of the filters but not the names of the parameters in there so for example we just say fx get parameter name i guess it's parameter name yeah and then for example we uh, basically do the same stuff as here so let's get into it so what we do is first of all get our structs of the specific layer so this dude once again and we say like hey is there an um, layer applied if yes so if there is an um, effect applied then we say fx parameters get names so here this dude here fx get parameters names specific layer then we cycle through a loop as through the array because this is then an array and then uh, what I did I just have parameters plus string e plus and then the actual parameter name and then boom I just draw that as a text below so let's see actually how that looks like and you can see parameter 0 parameter 1 2 3 e value so here the left part you can completely kick but here g distort scale scale g distort amount um, and then offset as you can see just one value but here we have two so it must have two values kind of inside it and then for example the store texture then would be this one so we can actually do that for all the other effects so for example for here for this specific layer we just check out okay we want to change uh, the colorize value so I guess there should be two so here for intensity and one for color and what you're seeing on the screen is my parameter one is G intensity. Intensity in this one is for color. And this is how you get those values which are inside the well, the filter itself. And then you can uh, change them on the fly if you like. And this is basically it. So here, uh, once again, to recap, go into the manual. If you create your own stuff, have here and for example, what you do, you just set the parameters here, set parameter, and then, well, this is the way it goes. Of course, they say you can basically, if you create a new effect, you override the old one, but I guess it would be more effective, at least I think so, I cannot actually prove it by the way, um, that we are, basically this is uh, how you can change the parameters inside into the step event, or you, what you can do is just uh, create every time a new distortion or whatever effect you want to like then set the parameters and set it to the layer I guess this is more uh, resource intensive and therefore I guess this is easier because you're just grabbing the specific value you want to change hopefully that wasn't too confusing so once again this is an introduction into the FX layers and after that I will completely skip on that part because I want to do quicker videos and then I will just reference to here to this one so this is for the advanced users how you can get the, your values for creating those beautiful fx effects on the screen already hopefully that was of interest to you guys and see you for the next video tutorial from my side have a good one one up indeed